and um, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to, so we're starting with a poll that's actually not on this. First off, who are you and what, what health science are you a part of? And then the number one is, have you coiled? And if you have, besides um, in the chat, if you could also um, just put your thumbs up if you have coiled within the health science, because that would be nice to see who on the call has coiled within the health science. I am not seeing very many thumbs. Well, I guess that's good. So, so up oh, there's Joan. <laughs> thumbs up. There's Annette. Oh, Annette, great to see. So, thumbs up in the health sciences. Vince, what have you done in the health science for um, coil collaboration? Um, I haven't uh, have any experience on coiled, and uh, I'm from exercise science. Oh, okay, so, you're in exercise science and you haven't done COIL, but you want to. What school are you with? Uh, arts and science. Uh, arts and uh, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, Georgia and Court University. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. And, and that, what was the, um, what was the health science that you were involved sure. in? Sure. Sure. So, um, it's what we call biocultural anthropology. It was an intro. Oh the cultural medical anthropology, but most of my, most of the students in my class were future physicians, were physician's assistants, and I partnered with a faculty member in Mexico who was teaching social psychology. So, and we had a cute module called in sickness and in health. So. Oh. Aww. <laughs> nice. Great. What, Dudu, were you asking a question? Or someone? Okay. All right. So number two question. Um, if you wanted to do COIL, what are the obstacles for doing COIL with your program or course? What do you visualize as the obstacles or it's keeping you from doing um, a collaboration within uh, your area of study, especially in nursing or the medical field where it's a very tight curriculum that you need a prescribed curriculum so that is our next question in the chat and um, i'm just going to check the chat and oh great radiography have you done a coil yet tando we've got to find out from you um great no, I, hi, 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 hi. Good, good day, everyone. No, good I haven't day. done a, I haven't done a coil project as yet. However, uh -huh. I am interested, hence I am here so that I can learn more about this and see how I can execute one. Wonderful. So glad you're here. Okay. Um, so thank you all for putting things in the chat about what is a potential obstacle? Actually, I'm not really seeing that yet, but um, time constraints, yes, indeed. Um, it is a big one. Um, and then what would you like, what would you hope the students would get from a collaboration? Um, okay. So, yeah, it's time. It always is. So Joan and Penny and Dudu and Lisa and Alma take note. This is what people are concerned about is um, the, the issue of time. And so actually we are on an issue of time too and we're going to um, keep going here. So everybody, as you're coming in, make sure to introduce yourself in the chat and say your name and your school. And um, if you have collaborated in the health sciences, and if you haven't, what, what are the challenges of why you haven't been able to do it? Okay, and I love seeing what you want students to get out of it. That's great, thank you. So just 
a little bit, um, actually, I'm just going to cut back to, I'm going to exit out of here for a second. And um, all right, before we um, jump into the rest of the slides, I just want to introduce um, our executive director, um, Mary Lou Forward. And are you on the call? I'm here. Yeah, you are. Hi, okay, everybody. great. <laughs> Do you want to say hi? <laughs> sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's nice to see you all. I hope you're enjoying my snowy background. Uh, for those of us who are in uh, the New York State area, it's quite hot. So this is my way of trying to use uh, air conditioning through visual means. Um, so it's lovely to see you all here. We're really happy to have you. We want to thank Hope and of course everybody who's presenting today for pulling this together. Uh, we're finding more and more that the health sciences are seeing the importance of cross-cultural skills development for their students and uh, virtual exchange, as Hope said, is one of the best ways to put it into a program that's generally very tight and doesn't permit a lot of physical exchange. So um, thank you very much. We're really looking forward to hearing more about the programs. Okay, great. Um, I'm just, for people who are new on the call, and um, actually, if you could just give me a show of hands of how many folks on the call are new to COIL, because I'm going to zoom through the slides that explain about COIL overall. Okay, we've got Marianne and Joanne from Upstate. Great. And Cheryl. Cheryl, where are you from? Um, SUNY Delhi. SUNY Delhi, wonderful, great. So um, Aline is your COIL coordinator, great. And Zandi from Durban, wonderful. So thank you all so much for being on the call. I'm going to share my slides and just um, say a few things about um, what a COIL collaboration can look like really quickly. So you have um, two the course of your, your course and the course of your partner. And the two of you design something together. You take a semester to do it. And then you come up with a module within your course and within the course of your partner. And you have your students work together. And so that is the basic thing. And usually it's sort of sprinkled throughout the semester so it's um, they t you take maybe an hour or two in um, week three of your course and week four week five you start to compare things you work on a project and then you do some reflection so that's the basic idea of a coil collaboration and what we're really like to stress to people is this is a great opportunity to you're not actually having to add something to your course, you're actually weaving um, this modality into how you teach the content that you already are teaching. So um, you don't have to get stuck up on feeling like you, you're the time issue because you're actually um, just repurposing. So with that, I'd like to introduce first Dr. Penny Orton and um, Dr. Lisa Schulte from Empire State and Penny from Durban University of Technology. And then we also have Dr. Dudu Sakela um, from Durban. So we have a wealth of people who actually are in a place in the world that is chilly right now, as opposed to some of us in the US who are hot. So. Um, Welcome aboard, and I'm going to turn it over to um, Lisa and Penny. Okay, uh, I think I'm unmuted, and um, can you hear me? Yep. Can, can you see my background? I also have a snow-covered background, but I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It says I'm sitting in my hot car here, but anyway, um, Penny, hi. Hi. Hi, Lisa. Are you with, how, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. And you? I think that I like the idea of the of the visual air conditioning. I think that talks to the sustainable development goals, too. Yes. <laughs> okay, would, great. Would you like to speak about the, the project or 
No, or you go you like for it. I'll speak to the slides, um, but you go, you start, and then when you get to some slides you haven't seen, then I'll do. Okay. All right. So I am full-time faculty at Empire State College in their School of Nursing and Allied Health. I teach a graduate course called uh, in population health. And within one of our modules, it's an all online program. And within one of our modules, we were looking at the UN sustainable goals. So that was the area that Penny and I collaborated on. So um, we, uh, we titled our program Examination of Global Health Disparities through a Collaborative Online International Partnership, a pilot project. And this was the, um, this is the, the heading for our project. Next slide. Okay, so many of you I saw in the chat um, discussed the problem of teaching cultural competence in healthcare. Certainly it's an issue for all of us uh, globally, but within nursing, it is one of our core competencies. So we felt that COIL was a perfect marriage for us, an opportunity to give our students who weren't able to travel abroad an opportunity for, for, to exchange cultures and to develop their cultural competence. Next slide. Um, in addition to feeling that, that it's important to, uh, to nursing, we also know that our major accrediting bodies are calling for all schools of nursing to teach cultural competence. So in addition to meeting our, our personal and professional goals, it also met the goals of our accrediting body and also the SUNY central goals of participating in globally networked learning. So we felt very comfortable that collaborating uh, on this uh, cultural experience met those goals as well as our professional goals. Uh, so how did we do this? The, um, everybody talks about uh, time, and I think one of the things you have to realize is that it doesn't have to be an entire semester, and that it can just be a small project. And so with, with uh, Penny and I, we found this one module where our objectives kind of um, overlapped. And so we started with the objectives and we looked at my course objectives and, and her course objectives and found areas of overlap that we could coordinate on. And that's very important. You want to make sure that you are, uh, you're all on the same page. You need to look at your partner's timeline and their, um, you know, their, their academic calendar. Pe uh, Penny, you know, they're in their winter now. And so times when we were in session, they were not. So that can be a little bit of an obstacle. You want to make sure that you're looking at that closely. You want to look at the platform that you're going to use. Are you going to use Moodle, Blackboard, Facebook? Um, depending on where you're, what country you're collaborating with, they may not have access to internet. And there are many, many modalities. And that's where COIL and HOPE in particular are very, very helpful in helping you figure out what the best modality is for your particular uh, situation. And then you want to make sure that you coordinate with your COIL office at your institution and with your instructional designers to help you come up with this project. Um, next slide. Okay. Penny, do you want to talk a little bit about your program? Um, yeah. So I was teaching occupational health nursing. Um, these are two professional nurses who are specializing in an occupational health uh, discipline. And um, they come in, they do four subjects, and they do it part-time over two years. Uh, so we were able to look at, um, and perhaps if you go to the next slide, please. And Penny, are yours undergraduate or graduate? No, they're graduates. Okay. Um, so I had, we had not planned it sort of a year in advance, our uh, project. So I looked at my learning outcomes and we have some uh, learning outcomes that are what we would call critical cross-field outcomes. So they're not very specific to the discipline of, in my case, occupational health, but I was able to take and, and merge with um, Lisa's learning outcomes some of those critical cross-field outcomes. So working together in a team, demonstrating understanding of the world as a set of related systems, using the technology and the participation as responsible citizens. And I think some of these spoke to 
the sustainable development goals, but they also spoke to outcomes that we expect from a COIL project, you know, the intercultural aspects, the technology and working in teams. So um, we were able to merge these things very nicely. Uh, next slide, please. Sir. And um, what I think one of the things was in terms of determining how, which course at DUT, um, I was only teaching this one particular course. So it was a case of, you know, stepping a little bit outside of your comfort, stepping a little bit outside of, of my discipline and looking for opportunities. Um, I think the one thing was that Lisa and I had had a personal relationship where we had met um, a year or two before that. Um, so we kind of knew each other. Um, it was convenient for me that I could um, bring her project into um, mine, you know, that we could meet them. I aligned with these critical cross field outcomes because I don't specifically look at sustainable development goals within my um, course in occupational health, but there's many synergies and there's many ways of, of using them, bringing them in as examples when I'm teaching um, my students other aspects of industry. So, you know, clean air, um, we look at air pollution and things in a, in a way and um, obviously sustainable development goals feeds into that. Also looking at matching the assessments. So what could I do without adding to what the students had already got in their, um, in, in their study guide for the year, um, but because my students have to do re reflective reports and they have to participate in online learning, I was able to then um, you know, just t take one of the five reflective reports and say it needs to be about your COIL project. And then because I was already offering my course via a blended learning um, approach, it was easy to introduce this online aspect. Thanks. Uh, so uh, Penny talked about her objectives. My objectives were more specific, but it's Im important to remember that you are grading your students and Penny was grading her students. So I graded mm -hmm. mine. So my students were, were responsible for the course objectives in my course and, and vice versa. So those were our course objectives that I was, uh, you know, made sure that we were looking at those. Hope next slide. So what we did, these were the, we used the, uh, the UN sustainable goals. Uh, we started with an icebreaker, which is very important. And I think almost one of the most uh, important parts of the course. During the icebreaker, students were really able to establish online relationships and really chat and get to know each other. They were able to share what type of nursing they did, their background, where they lived, um, and, and establish that rapport that laid the foundation for the coursework ahead. So the icebreaker is extremely important. What we realized as we were working through it, that it was important to embed uh, graphics like maps so that if a student said, I, I live in the Hudson Valley of New York, one of the South African students could just click on that map and see where they lived and get a satellite photo of the area. And that was very, very important and very helpful. And we learned that as we went along. So little things like that. Uh, and then we had a discussion board. So it was a, a three week module, all online. And uh, the students just, we never had a synchronous uh, moment. It was always asynchronous. Mm -hmm. And they participated in a discussion around the UN sustainable goals. And they could choose any, any number of those goals that they wanted to address. Next slide, Hope. Um, so, uh, you know, I can share in the breakout session more of the, uh, some pearls of wisdom here, but what was, I think, most compelling out of this assignment was the reflective journal piece, asking them what they learned, what was surprising, what was the most important part, how did they see um, their role in sustaining UN sustainable goals and so forth. And out of those journals came the very powerful um, expressions of, of the learning that had taken place. And um, so I thought that was a you know, very important 
a part of of this whole component and then these were just some of the you know the student comments and overwhelmingly the students found it a very very valuable experience they were able to compare professional roles they were able to see uh, really how small the world is and that we have so much in common most of them asked that they they would like to be involved in a full semester coil project um, and so overall, it, it was uh, students overwhelmingly felt that it was a valuable experience. So I hope I don't know if you want me to to talk. I can talk about some of these challenges in my breakout session. I don't know what our time is like, but the the one um, thing I will say in terms of the language and cultural barriers, Penny, I don't know if you had this experience, but I. I, again, as we as we got into the module, I realized that it was important to set the tone for them. Uh, many of my English speaking students didn't realize they were, I think, maybe trying to impress either me as the professor or the other students and speaking in a um, kind of a scholarly manner. But there were some language barriers at some point. And so we had to talk about that as a sidebar a little bit so that they could uh, make their language, their communication very uh, in simple terms, not to dummy it down, but to make sure that we avoided colloquialisms and, and typical jargon that we may use. And uh, that's important to, to press your students for that so moving forward I, I would spend more time on that so the students were all prepared uh, next so, slide. international English or globish versus you know a, like you said colloquialism yeah yeah okay um. all right so Penny, is there anything else you want to add? No, I, I just wanted to say that um, yes, all my students, well, majority of my students are second language, English second language speakers, sometimes third or fourth language speakers too. Um, and in terms of, of meeting professional board requirements, obviously, um, and very commonly for all the health professions and engineering and so on, we do have uh, professional board. Uh, requirements. So it's always important to keep that. And I think um, it doesn't add a level of complexity. We just have to bear it in mind and, and you know, pay attention to that. But um, yeah, I, and I think some of the cultural things in terms of time management and so on also come through, which from our side, um, it would be better, you know, I could prepare my students better for, for the time management issues as well. Thanks. Thank you. So, Dr. Dudu Sukela, would you like to say a few words about um, this collaboration? Yes, so <clears throat> the collaboration that I had was my students were the nursing students and um, the SUNY Alsta students were doing emotional nutrition. So where we found common ground was that nurses had an assignment where they were supposed to choose a family with a malnourished child and they collaborated on the nutrition aspect of helping assisting this family with nutrition. <clears throat> right. Okay. So I had 30 students who are at the same level as Penny students. They come in to specialize in primary healthcare nursing. And then we had uh, 12 as uh, nutrition students from SUNY Ulster. So because in South Africa, malnutrition is high in children and therefore there's mandatory exclusive breastfeeding for six months before introduction of solid. This is so that at least for the six months, the children get the nutrition that they need because of the high unemployment rate. Mothers are young, unemployed, most of them still going to school and all of that. And they, were, they, they lacked knowledge on good nutrition. So one of the programs that the government had introduced was One Home, One Garden, so that every home is able to have nutritious, at least fresh vegetables. Um, 
So there was a collaboration on that. And uh, the Ulster students were also helping with um, nutrition for this child. Um, I will just summarize and not go through all the slides. Um, well, what, what, what was interesting was that you would find that um, as much as students shared what their cultural foods were, you would find that sometimes the Ulster students would recommend something that, that is not known in South Africa, particularly by Blacks. For instance, they would recommend kale. In South Africa, Black people don't know kale. We at least know spinach and other leafy vegetables. So that, that was the most interesting part to know that there were foods that were seen to be nutritious by some students when it was not available for other students. Um, another exercise that I think both students enjoyed a lot was when we bought foods in South Africa that are not available in America and were sent through with um, Professor Kathy Knox, who had, who, visit, who had visited Deben and was sent over to Ulster and they made meals on the day and they came back and shared with us what they made with what they we had sent. It was surprising how they thought of how to use the foods that we had said. For instance, with cornmeal, they made bread, something that we wouldn't, <coughs> excuse me, something that we wouldn't normally do. Otherwise, another important thing that also was used to encourage students was that there was going to be an assessment at the end of the of the collaboration. Students were assessed on the diets that they planned for the family. They were also graded for their interaction on Facebook because we find that some students would just, just click like or would read and not say anything. So they were given grades for interacting on Facebook. And yeah, so my students enjoyed it a lot. Uh, it so happened that we had a cultural day in September. And so students sent in photos of the cultural foods that were eaten on the day, on the cultural day, which is what we see here. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Dudu. I really appreciate it. And um, what, what's also great is um, both Penny and Lisa and Dudu, all, we all work together. And um, so it's wonderful to see these collaborations and the fruition of them. And um, you'll get a chance to ask questions um, a little in a little bit, but right now we have a really interesting collaboration like Dudu and Robert um, Cassidy, who was a chemistry teacher teaching nutrition and Dudu was teaching nursing. Joan is a nursing professor and Alma is a architecture professor. So um, with that, Joan, please take it away. You're on mute. There you go. I, I have to say that listening to the speakers before me, um, they have said everything that you need to consider when you're deciding to do a COIL course. I mean, they spoke of meeting certain requirements in the accrediting body. Absolutely, nursing has to account to that. We also have to account to our institutional learning outcomes. So it really is a, a nice way to know. It kind of validates the fact that there's connection through the whole thing. Um, our institutions are critical to our programs and our programs have to reflect what they need out of, out of us. So it, the thing different between Alma and I, and you spoke about it, you said language issues. I think because we were born into the USA, um, Mexico multi-state program, we met in Cuernavaca, I really had limited 
language skills in Spanish. And I think it took three days before we finally realized what we were saying to each other. But like other faculty that have spoken, you do have to prepare a syllabus and an outline and it has to, it has to really have some kind of balance. And the balance I think that um, Penny spoke of was that you're responsible for your course and someone else is responsible for their course. So for me, I thought it was automatic because Alma was building or construction and I was nursing. So we kept it separate. I graded mine, she graded hers. Ours actually was applied to their, um, their applied learning requirement. So it was a time issue for, for our students at Nassau. They had to spend 30 minutes a week and we were able to use the entire semester. Alma, on the other hand, was actually grading the assignment that our students were using. So I felt very obligated to make sure that the nursing part of this didn't play any negative part to the construction student's grade. What happened with us, and you, could, you, you ask about the end of program student outcomes, culture, the understanding of culture and the differences and, and similarities, even similarities are important for them to see, was really critical. And that was what really played a nice part in the institutional um, mission and the fact that the courses, now the course I chose and the course Alma chose actually were introductory courses in both programs. So I use Nursing 101, which in an associate degree program is really where students learn how to look at a person through all the different, what do you call it, glasses. So they look at their um, demographics, they look at their religion, they look at their culture, they look at where they live, their socioeconomic status, they look at everything. So that was really what we hoped to get out of it. And that went along with the human flourishing that we measure throughout our program in each course, a little differently in each course, but this was 101. So it was like the very beginning of asking the students to really open up their minds and look at a person and try to understand using all of these differences. Now the school in Mexico, which is the University of San Potosi, those students needed to follow their assignment, looking at our culture, but not our multiculture, but our, our demographics. So they needed to look at our terrain, our vegetation, our animal life, um, and our population and the differences within our population which was very interesting when we were doing the second project. But for a real brief synopsis, um, that's how I picked the course and that's how it aligned with the school. And it was a beautiful arrangement. Next slide. So this is really a pictorial. The outlines in the previous um, faculty did are perfect. So if you get a copy of this, those are exactly what you need to consider. So. Alma and I were in Mexico together planning the course for the fall spring. So we did that. And the objective was her students needed to learn how to read um, diagrams, instructions. They needed to be able to decide what kind of building materials and all of the things that go into building. My students in Nursing 101 needed to learn how to look at a person and decide what their perception of health was, why, and all, all the cultural pieces that come in. So what we decided to do first was to build a virtual hospital. Her students had the assignment of building the building and our students had the assignment of being consults to the, the construction workers, right? So it was really a way that, and as a nurse, I don't know if any of you have experienced, but I've never really thought about the building I worked in for so long as I did going through it with the students because when they divide it into units for their construction assignment, the students in Mexico needed to ask the students here a lot of questions about the unit. So for example, we had a group, a little team working in the PEDS. They were putting together a PEDS unit. One was doing a radiology unit. One was doing a NICU and one was doing maternity. They kind of picked the specialties because I think that was a little more fun for them, but either way, our students had to look at the physical structure of a unit in a hospital and say, oh my goodness, that's why the room is X amount of big. I have to fit 34 bassinets in here. And so the construction students needed to know how big to make the room because this hospital is requiring a, a, 
admission of 34 babies a day. I, I don't really understand that. But so if you understand everything, they had to figure out why we needed to put the MRI room down in the basement because of that huge magnet. So it was just really, really a nice way for the students to be able to just on their own time in their applied learning assignment criteria piece that they had to do and just look at nursing and the building that they were going to be working in, which I thought was really, really nice. We never it's, had it. Excuse me. I'm sorry. You had, you mentioned an applied learning piece. Can you just um, oh, right. reiterate well, that? SUNY has an applied learning initiative and we're really very pro applied learning at Nassau Community College. So what our students are obligated to do is put in eight hours of applied learning and it can be community service, it can be service learning. It has a number of factors. Our clinical is actually already embedded in the program as an applied learning component, but we do require seven or eight hours depending on the semester that the student has to do some project on their own or in a group and it has to be related to the community. So using that requirement, I was actually able to ask them if they would prefer, and they all voted it, but nobody said no, for 30 minutes a week dedicated to this project. And we did keep track of how many times they responded to their peers. So it was definitely watched by faculty. We used Facebook. I saw someone else use Facebook also as the platform for the course, which worked out really well because they could make videos, they could talk to each other, and it was a nice um, low-key kind of a classroom situation, so it worked out really well. I just um, want to interject about Facebook that now we don't really use Facebook anymore, but Edmodo, which is a private version of Facebook, is very similar, but it's private and password protected, and so um, for folks on the call, like uh, Facebook and students yeah. hate Facebook, and so yeah. Um, and there's other tools, Padlet and all those kind of things, but I just, sorry to interrupt, um, but go oh, ahead, no, Joan. No. no, believe me, I feel like when I, when you asked to do this, I got to go back in my history. So, so yeah, we started along, I mean, I started in 2015 with COIL. So, right, Facebook was like the first thing we, they were trying. So either way, that's what, that was what we were using in, in fall 16. And we did use it again in fall 17. And right, three years later, it's a whole different world. And I'm sure there are so much more secure sites. But either way, we did use Facebook. And it is a platform, probably like the other ones that are available now, where students could interact, videotape themselves. Uh, and they did that. So when we built the virtual hospital, it was a challenge because of the, um, uh, the language. But we did have enough students that could speak Spanish. And the Spanish students, all the, I mean, the students in the Mexico construction class, they all had taken English. So it was a nice way for them to practice their English and nobody hesitated to speak in the language of their partners, which was also nice. The second time that Alma and I were able to work together, we created a virtual and you could move the slide again if you want. These are the students for the virtual hospital. These are the students for the virtual assisted living. And if you see, Alma actually was able to come to our campus. So she's actually being interviewed at a radio station right there in one picture. And she's actually on the floor in one of our simulation rooms. She was doing her own head to toe on one of our mannequins. So this was really fun. It was a really good experience and it doesn't happen all the time like this, but she was able to come to New York on the funding that was for the program. So if you could go to the next slide. This is when Alma was here. She actually went around the campus of Nassau Community College and she took pictures because we have an incredible history. So this was the non-commissioned officers quarters when it was Mitchell Field. So anybody that's not familiar with it knows Nassau Community College. Now they know Nassau Community College is built on an old army base, Air Force base, I'm not, but it was old Mitchell Field. So she took this building and this is what she gave to her students and they were supposed to remodel it and make it an assisted living. The Nursing 101 students, besides the cultural piece, they have to do an interview with an older adult, which allows them to interview someone and ask them questions to find out who they are, a little bit about their medical history, family, religious, culture, all the things that they have to find out, they have to do it through an interview. So in their interview, they added one question and the question was, if you had to go to an assisted living, what would you want there? So 
none of them wanted to go to an assisted living, but they all had suggestions for the if. So the Nassau nursing students were in charge of trying to have the students from Mexico, San Lo Potosi, look through the eyes of the resident of the assisted living. So the students were telling them what they had to include in this renovation project of this building on Mitchell Field. And they were suggesting, I mean, I guess the older adults were suggesting bocce ball courts, gardens, that was one thing, a large room where their families could come. They wanted computer service. They wanted a really, they wanted the county bus to come close enough so that they could be taken to the malls. So this whole experience building the assisted living, not only did it involve the school in Mexico finding out what was going on with the property here or the land here, but they needed also to understand a really good bit about who was gonna live in this building. So you can go to the next slide. This building doesn't look any better either right now. It's, it's still, so these are the students in the class. We took a field trip over just so they could see the building that they were asking the um, students in San Lopatosi to renovate. And I wanted them to stand outside the building and have the view that the person who was going to be living in the building would have. And we're very fortunate. We have Nunley's Carousel right across the street from this now in, one of, uh, in between two of our old hangars. And the next slide shows the students that were involved from San Lopatosi who also were helping. They were the, the men and women. You can see this is quite a, a nice group. And they were doing an incredible job of trying to um, put it all together and make it work. Now, I know we're running out of time, so I really want to get to the breakout rooms. But I just want you to know that everything was said by the speakers ahead of me. And this poster, it says it all for us. Um, Almer and I did this, and it, was, it says it all from what COIL is to what it meant to each of the programs. So this is really something, if you get a copy of this and you can look at it, it really does kind of, it makes sense. So COIL makes sense, but like I said, the speakers before me said it all with things to consider, the pros and the cons, and that's it. So I'm looking forward to the breakout section. So hope you can take it away. Okay, thank you so much, Joan. And thank you everyone. This was really great. Um, so we, we do have a little bit of time for questions and um, why don't we do a poll? It, um, if people do want to go into breakout rooms, give a thumbs up or a clap. And if you'd rather stay here in the larger room, um, just don't do anything. What will the breakout rooms hold? Sorry? The breakout rooms will be just a chance to ask questions to a smaller um, group and to also help um, the nursing and medical and radiology and various health professors on the call to take a little time and to think of what course you have that you might be able to do something with um, that would be a collaboration that would be a coil like activity is there a particular course that you have and so the breakout rooms were an opportunity for people to take a little bit of time and to have um, that sort of thinking about what is it that you teach and how could you take that and use that for a collaboration. All right, well, Marianne has her hand up. Um, and so do you still have a question, Marianne? That was a long time ago. Marianne Snow, if you're talking, you are muted. I can unmute you. Oh, okay. no, that's I, I never put my hand back down. That was from the oh, initial okay. one. All right. Sorry. Okay. No, do you want to ask your question now? Um, I don't even remember what it was. So <laughs> <laughs> it was so long ago. <laughs> All right. Well, um, so why don't we go into the breakout rooms for a little bit? And um, so this is an opportunity for people to think of what 
kind of course that you have that you would like to try to do this. And if you have questions for the presenters, um, and I will um, stop sharing and um, right and uh, trying to convince somebody maybe um, what will help is this recording. You can share this recording um, and also this presentation and or also bring Alma and Joan or Lisa and Penny or Dudu to your campus through Zoom and have them present to your people um, because sometimes it needs to be instructor to instructor. Um, they have the secret handshake or something <laughs> where they can truly believe from each other that it's not going to be um, a, a an overwhelming obstacle to do a collaboration like this. Mm -hmm. And even though we know in the health sciences, this is really needed. Um, and there are also other kinds of connections too um, in social services, the human um, services fields um, that can also connect. We did one at Ulster with accounting. So it was looking at how do you care for aging people in the world of finance and healthcare. And um, that turned out to be a really interesting connection because um, the finance folks were from Mexico and pretty much everybody takes care of the elderly um, personally, as opposed to working this, um, using a system to take care of the elderly. So um, it was an interesting connection for the students to learn about that. Um, any other revelations in the, um, in the uh, breakout rooms? Oh, can I, I'm Please. sorry, I don't, I don't yeah. have my hand up, but just before we were whisked back to the group, there was a question about how to tie COIL into faculty development. I thought it was such a, a great question because that is so very important um, because COIL is um, a really uh, a, a very strong representation of scholarship. And so that when people faculty view it that way it it, it helps um, helps them think about it differently and that they want to incorporate that into their um, you know portfolio and additionally it it's helpful for the institution right? so it's a win-win in that regard and I'm sorry I, I didn't get your name the question came at the end but she was asking how do we how does she make it uh, coil more available to her entire faculty? So you might want to follow yeah. up on another end. Well, but. actually, Lisa, if you would further just say, um, oops, we've already gone over 11. I'm sorry, everybody. But if anybody wants to stay, you can, or if you can say goodbye. But Lisa, you had gone on to speak at the National Nursing Conference you had, and New York and a bunch of other um, opportunities for scholarship for you, right? Yeah, so I actually did share this experience uh, uh, through ANA, through, um, I, I presented at several professional conferences and podium presentations and in poster presentations, and there was a tremendous interest, and that's what's uh, really rewarding is that people were really interested to learn. I, I just thought it was my, you know, little coil collaboration, but people are very, very interested and it's information that needs to be shared and it, it truly is viewed as scholarship. So from that perspective, if that's a motivator, I, I highly recommend it. Great. All right. Any other thoughts or we will say goodbye. Thank you all so much. Um, COIL is a great place to do research and do scholarship, and there's plenty of room. So um, jump on, especially in the health sciences. So Andrea, we should use that. Andrea Martinez, that's for you, okay? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Hope. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Hope, for organizing. Uh, thank, thank you for you. being here, Penny. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.